Hey Cecil, uh, I'm going to show you how to make a very simple camera movement. Um, so let's start. Uh, first of all, you're going to make sure that the project settings over here are 25 frames per second. Uh, because in Europe uh, we, call, we use um, PAL, so that's normally 25 frames per second. Okay. Um, we go to render settings and then make the project on 16.9 uh, um, widescreen and the rest will take care of it later, okay? Right, I go to MoGraph and I put a simple text object. Uh, the object, I'll make sure uh, it's aligned in the middle, like this. And you can put anything you want. Uh, you can also use a cube or, or a sphere or whatever you like to, to use, but I today use a text object. And I make it depth 40 just for the fun of it. So now I'll move my screen a little bit like this, okay? And I'll make it a little bit smaller like that. Okay, what I'll do now, I'll make a very simple circle spline. And I want that spline to be minus 90 degrees. So I can do that either with the rotation tool over here. So I can, you see, move the spline to the ground like 90 degrees or more accurate, I go over here and I press minus 90 and enter. Okay, now I go to the little square over here and then I'll see four different angles of my object. And I want that circle to be in the middle of Sissel. So I go to the move tool over here. Then I'll drag the circle halfway through Sissel. You see over here, right. Now, I also want the circle to be all, all covering the object, so I'll make it, have to make it bigger. So I go to the uh, scale tool now, and then I'll make the circle bigger and bigger. Make it quite big because you need some area to cover with your camera. Okay, now I go to camera and put a camera into the po project. Okay, now I uh, click command and click camera, and then you'll see Cinema 4D tags and I'll add a, a line to spline, yes. I'll do that again, command, camera, cinema 4D tags, and a target, okay. I click on the target box over here, and the target is of course Sizzle, yeah, the, the text object. So I'll drag and drop the text object into the target object, right. Now I go to the align to spline uh, box, and then I'll drag and drop the circle into the spline path over here. Okay. So now if you go to camera, you can now see if you go to position underneath here and you go up and down, you see the camera move along the circle. All right. Okay. In the left top box, you go to cameras and then scene camera and camera. And then also to perspective over here. So now you can see uh, what the viewer of the camera sees, you see? Okay, so let's say I want to start at the back of Sizzle, like here, like say about 25 frames in position. And I would like to start in the air. So what I'll do, I go to the circle, then I go to coordinates and to the left P and then the Y box, I'll drag it up and, and then you'll see the camera move all the way to the roof, you see that's, that's where I like to start my animation on top. Okay, so now I go to the beginning of the of the project in the timeline, and I go to zero, and I'll add a keyframe over here. Yes, one keyframe. Then I move the slider to about forty frames over here, and then I'll go back to the the Y at the P, and then I'll just bring back the camera, and as you can see. Uh, the camera is going all the way down again towards Sizzle, you see? So this is where I want it to stop. And I'll make another keyframe. So what you get is this, you see? It's moving down and that's it. But now I want the camera to move as well at the same time around Sizzle. So I go all the way back again into the project like this. I click camera over here, all right? And I go to the position over here and I do control click position and it becomes red. You see, that's recording mode. And then I'll move the slider all the way to the end of the project. 
at the last frame. And then I'm going to move the position slider uh, to where I want the camera to stop. And I want it to stop over here, like that. Okay? And I press Control, click the position button again. And what you get now is this. You see? Uh, maybe the circle should be a bit more wider, so you got the whole uh, object into the camera window. So what I'll do now is I go to Circle and to Scale Tool, and I'll make the camera circle a little bit bigger like this, okay? So now you should see uh, this. Yeah, once again, it's a very simple camera movement, but it's pretty um, effective, and it looks quite nice, okay? Okay, now you want to save it as a movie, so you go to a Render, and then you go to Render Settings, Right, uh, we want to have a screen output of 1024 by 768, that's pretty big enough. Then the film aspect ratio is of course 16.9 for widescreen. And you must make sure that the frame range, very important, is not set to current frame but all frames. Because you want to make a movie, so you want to have all the frames into your movie. Okay, last thing we do, we're going to go to the save button and we'll save it. Uh, I'll save it as Sizzle on my desktop, save. And we want the format to be a window, of a Windows, a, a QuickTime movie. <laughs> Me and Windows, that's not a very good combination. Okay, so now we'll just press Shift R. And here you see the movie is on the way in the making. And in a few moments, it will be ready to be watched. And of course, this goes quite fast because it's a very simple object with no lightning, no floor, no scene, no whatever. So this should be finished quite soon. Okay, it's almost there. So as you can see, it's um, very easy. And um, you, you can use many, many objects to, 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 to use the camera as well. Look, and now it looks like this. There you go. A one of a hell of a beautiful camera movement. Okay, Sissel, see you later. Bye bye.